Recently, we had the Bulgarian Championship 2023 that was held in the city of Sofia. And it was a very strong tournament. As you can see, the starting rank, the top seed was Kirill Georgiev. There were many more GMs, Martin Petrov, Momchil Petkov, Radoslav Dimitrov and so on. And the ninth seed of the tournament was Nurgul Salimova. Uh, she could have played in the women's section, but she decided to play in the open and she was the ninth seed. And guess what she did? She finished second in the tournament with a very fine performance of six points out of nine. And she managed to beat uh, GM Krasimir Rusev, Radoslav Dimitrov and also FM Lachesar Yordanov. But more than just her result, her games were simply amazing. So it gives me immense pleasure to welcome this amazing player on our interview on Chess Biz India. Hello, Nurgul. How are you? Hello, Sagar. I'm doing fine. Just taking rest at home. Thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm fantastic. I was amazed uh, at your performance at the Bulgarian Championship. Uh, you know, you played really well. But the thing which was very interesting is that there was a women's event that was held along with it. Why did you decide to play in the open open tournament, open event? Well, the first time I won women's national championship was when I was 13 years old. Okay. So I thought that I need something more challenging. And I think also previous edition, I again played in men's section. So it's just more challenging, more interesting games. And I just want to like, um, com not compare, but like see how I play against the uh, better players. I mean, against grandmasters and in women's section, unfortunately, we don't uh, really have them. So men's section sounded more interesting. Yes, I mean, if you would have played in the women's section, you would have been the top seed. But here you started as the ninth seed. Uh, what was your expectation when you decided to play? Was it like, okay, I should maybe finish in top 10 or was it like, okay, I should finish in top 3? How was it? Well, to be honest, before my uh, before the championship, I had exams at school, like 19 exams. Whoa. So I was not really 100% concentrated on the tournament before the start, of course. But uh, I just wanted to play well because... Uh, it's been like one month I didn't play chess and I really miss playing chess after all those exams. So I really like enjoyed playing chess and I just, uh, I didn't really have some expectations because, uh, okay, I never really have them. I mean, I just want to show my best and I know that if I show my best, I will have a good result. So I was, I just want to enjoy the game. Yeah, I have heard often that when people, you know, are done with their exams, they are quite relaxed. And then they are able to show their best chess. Maybe something on those lines. What do you study? Uh, and and you're, you're a student of what subject? Actually, I'm still in high school. I'm graduating this year. Uh, I was supposed to graduate last year. But, uh, uh, you know, I don't go to school, but I have only exams. Uh, I'm not sure how it's called in English exactly. But uh, I couldn't finish last year because I had covid and i couldn't attend my exams and then i had uh, i think women's bundesliga so i again couldn't go something like this hmm. so this year i'm graduating okay so this year you will graduate uh, and you are very active as a player you know i i uh, was checking uh, some of your posts on instagram and i saw that of course this is the tournament that you finished second in in the bulgarian championship but you are also here in India for the for the chess Olympiad. So so you are very active, right? You play a lot of chess. Yeah, I think I actually play really a lot of chess. And maybe that's the reason why I can't increase my rating because I get too tired. But but you are 2400 plus. Yeah, now after this tournament, you would be 2407. Uh, uh yeah i was 24 25 when i was 16 years old now i'm almost 20. Mm -hmm. so i actually i don't know why i stopped gaining rating i think i hope that i maybe i need to like grow a bit more as a person also you know to 
actually improve my reading and so on. And yes, now right now I would be 2407, I think. Right. But the tournament was unrated, which is really sad. So the, I'm still 2387. Yes, unfortunately it was oh. unrated. Oh, why why was that the case? Well, we still have problems with, I mean, the Bulgarian Federation still has problems with the European Chess Union, with FIDE and so on. And uh, now the new uh, president and his team are trying to fix it. I hope they will fix it so we will not play underrated tournaments in future. Yeah, well, you, you worked really hard in this, this tournament. You played some amazing games. I would love to see one of those. Uh, but before we go there, you made a very interesting statement, which I just want to pick your mind about was that you need to grow as a person in order to grow your rating. W what does that mean? Like, is it like you need to experience more things as just a, a person which helps you in chess or how, how does that work? Well, yes, that's uh, also a thing. You need to be more calm, I guess. I mean, personally, I need to be more calm because, I, you know, like my emotions, my my mind is some big mess sometimes. And I believe it, uh, you know, it's not good for during a chess tournament, especially. So I think the older you are, not the older, but like more mature you are, you also improve your chess and your life in general. Fantastic. That's that's very good to know. Uh, and uh, Nurgil, who, who is your trainer? Whom do you work with on chess? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that. But okay, I also work with different people. So let's say it like that. <laughs> okay, so it's it's a uh, it's not uh, an open thing. You 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 have it as a secret. Maybe someday when you achieve some more aims in chess. We'll get to know. Should we look at one of your favorite games from, from this championship? Sure, yes. Uh, which one was it and, and why why would you say that was your favorite? Because you played some many, many good games here. Well, uh, seventh round against Luchazar Yordano. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he's rated the 2335, I think. And I beat actually also like players with higher rating. But this game is like really i don't know i really love this game because i played e4 and i'm not an e4 player so for me it was like a really big thing you know to play e4 uh, after three years because before i was e4 player but i stopped playing it for some reason and i really like that i attacked nicely this game and okay it just looks nice attractive you know you are not an e4 player I mean, recently. no, I'm actually D4 player. Yeah. Wow. Because when I looked at this game and I was just going through it, I was like, okay, she knows her theory very well and she knows her stuff quite well. And now that you said you don't play E4, that's very surprising. So let's have a look at the game and then I would like to, you know, uh, get your thoughts on some of the decisions you made. So you opened with E4. Okay. Uh, your mm -hmm. Danov played the Sicilian and we had the. Uh, Sicilian Nidorf on the board. You played Bishop G5. So how how would you describe yourself as a player? I my sense is from what the games I saw, I think you are a very aggressive player. Would you agree? I actually think the opposite. I actually feel better in more like positional uh, chess. Let's say like some long maneuvers, like just keep playing for ten hours. You know, mm. grind slowly. Uh, but okay, I mean, to be a good player, you need to be good at both. So I'm trying to improve also my dynamics, let's say. And I don't think it's also bad. I mean, I, let's say it's decent, but I prefer position. Right. Okay. All those who are going to see this game as your first game ever are going to definitely think that you are an <laughs> attacking player. Okay. So you, you went knight bd7. And now mm -hmm. Queen E2, was this your preparation or because the main moves here are F4 and Bishop C4. I think these two are the top two moves and this is the third most popular move. Yeah, I think Bishop C4 is uh, popular recently. But yeah, Queen E2 is not the main line. But yeah, of course, it was my preparation. Okay, so you prepped it. Uh, E6, Long Castle. Yes. Queen to C7. 
f4 b5 and very typical uh, black just wants to develop bishop b7 maybe bishop e7 and so on and you you took the fight directly by playing f5 and and there are some 60 odd games in this position so it's not uh, something new b4 and now you played uh, he, he thought here for 22 minutes or 23 minutes for this move. So maybe he was already out of his preparation. Yes, actually, f5 is, uh, of course, it was my preparation. It's a rare line. The main line is a3, of course, to stop b4. Mm, correct. And, uh, okay, that's also very typical, you know, for Sicilian. But f5 is quite challenging. And, you know, you need to know concrete theory. And since it's really rare, I guess that he would not be prepared let's say or not as well prepared as me mm. so i was you know i prepared uh, quite a few hours in the night and in the morning so i was uh, confident to go for this line well e5 is a better move than before i believe here uh, and the line goes like 95 yeah. yes we talked after the game he said he didn't like 95 but knight takes d5 he takes d5 Mm -hmm. And you again need to know, I think knight b6 is the only move in the position. Yes, uh, because otherwise I have some ideas like knight e6 coming. Ah. And okay, it's quite dangerous. So if you don't know, it's actually, you know, quite risky to go for it. But you Because now queen h5. Yeah, queen h5 looks like there are some games here as well. Yes, and uh, what was the line? Bishop e7, I think. Mm -hmm. There was some game of uh, Husam bet against Murabli in this position. I think I was following that game. Correct. Um, yes, uh, h4 or no, bishop, bishop d3, d3, sorry. Yeah. Bishop d3, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, like I checked it and I still don't remember. So imagine <laughs> you don't check it and you don't know what to do during the game. Absolutely. So I think it was a good choice by me, good yeah. opening choice. Very practical choice. And uh, yeah, so f5. And he played b4, and you said, okay, I, I'm going to take this. This uh, Also, you played very quickly, and now your opponent took on c3. Makes sense, otherwise, what was the point? Yeah, so ed7, yeah. and here uh, he had a choice between taking with the knight and taking with the bishop, I guess, because taking with the queen might not be yes. that good. Yeah, well, he took with the knight, which is uh, actually... I checked mainly bishop takes d7, which is engine move, of course. Mm. But then when he played knight d7, of course, I also checked knight d7. But when he played it, I forgot. And I was like, okay, but this is the human move. Why? I mean, I didn't check this deeper. So I started thinking, I guess, uh, like, bishop d7, the problem is that you just, at some point, uh, black, I mean, white will take on f6. I mean, first queen c4, of course, you want to put this queen on some better position. Mm -hmm. And I think the best for black is to, okay, probably cb2. Right. King b1 and exchange the queens because I believe black king is in more danger than white. Mm. And what you do, bishop? Bishop e7? e7 makes sense, yes, just to avoid the doubling of pawns. Well, uh, rook e1, I guess. Right. Yeah, again, there were some games. I'm not sure right now because I have really bad memories. Sorry. Yeah, I think Ko Koisen end... Siva versus Sandeepan, yeah, and some Danin mm -hmm. versus Sujiro. Yeah. So, yeah, this, this line has been played. Yes, but the this position just looks... Uh, it is better for white. I mean, uh, I will take on B2 at some point. I believe I have much more active pieces. D6 is always a weakness, although, okay, E4 also looks like a weakness, I believe. Right. Right. But uh, I mean, bishop f4 might be fall, uh, might fall, then uh, some bishop b3, you know, to close this b file, knight f5 ideas. And just white doesn't have any uh, problem in the position. It's just risk free. So I think I can only win this. Right. Uh, not lose. So I, I'm happy with it. Okay. So your opponent took on d7 with the knight, and you went ahead with the same plan. You thought here for 14 minutes, your first thing. So queen c4, mm -hmm. and he took on b2, and you quietly moved the king, which is very logical, to b1. And now, yes. instead of trading the queens and going into 
uh, an inferior end game which i think this is as as you just explained right now you know slightly better for white he decided mm-hmm. to go knight c5 and i think this is this is the key moment of the game when you started to sort of uh, show your true a- attacking skills because you thought here for 37 or 38 minutes can you take us through your thinking what what were you thinking about Well, first I was very surprised because uh, I don't know I somehow didn't see any other move except queen takes c4 because you know in my mind I always thought that this king on e8 should be you know in bigger danger than the king on b1 and also you have you know bishop to develop and so on so I kind of had to like you know evaluate the position for some minutes and then start calculating and okay i calculate but i kind of don't like anything and i'm like okay what is this <laughs> i mean <laughs> i didn't do anything weird so you know it should be still okay somehow and okay of course bishop e2 is the most natural move in the position right with the idea of maybe getting the rook here right uh, on f1 perhaps. yes and okay you have bishop h5 i guess and it is you know quite uh, dangerous for black correct and if bishop e7 Mm-hmm. You know, maybe now, ah, I thought maybe I, t- I can take and push e5, you know, I'm not sure if this works. So. Take and maybe queen Yes, because queen e7, e5, and okay, you cannot take because of knight c6, Whoa. I think. Right, and then rook yes. d8 check incoming. Yeah, looks crazy. Yes. Looks very strong. And if we take with the queen, that's already looking very dangerous. I mean, just. Well, bishop f3 maybe yeah yeah and this is and rook one yes yeah this looks quite bad so bishop e7 doesn't work i think and i'm not even sure what he's supposed to do because uh i just want to go bishop h5 next move and rook f1 so maybe he's sh- he should still you know go for some bishop e6 or knight e6 and try to try to trade the quiz because ah, uh, yeah. something like this and i trade now yes and i again get this uh and the game which is just more comfortable for white correct so so then why didn't you play bishop e2 uh, what was your reason because it looks pretty uh, good i saw e5 <laughs> you um, you got tempted by this uh, aggressive idea yes yes um okay as i mentioned in the beginning you know you need to be more calm you need mm. to be more mature i'm not like that so i i don't have this patience you know and i just wanted to push e5 open the center you know it just looks more challenging uh i'm not sure i mean bishop e2 is stronger i checked it afterwards of course but e5 also looks you know like quite uh, if i was black i decided okay, i would be scared if someone played e5 i mean what is this my king is on e8 you open all files and so on and okay i spent 40 minutes nearly to evaluate everything and he just took d5 in like Two minutes, three minutes. I don't know. Yeah, he, and he, I was like very scared because what I mean, if you take so fast, you probably see something. And I'm like, okay, what didn't I see? Right. So, but okay, so, I'm winning. <laughs> yeah, you're winning, and I would like all the viewers to pause the video here and try to think what was the idea that Nurgul came here, came up here with. It was very beautiful. <laughs> Did you think about this idea before playing e5? Did you already see it through? Yeah, of course, but I saw the wrong move order and I was very sad that it didn't work, but then I decided, oh, why I don't try the other move order? Ah. Okay, it just worked. Okay. Yeah. So so, so you sometimes you try to change move orders. Absolutely. So you started off with knight to b5, which is a fantastic move attacking the queen. Uh and we'll come to it, but you mentioned that you wanted to start off with queen d5. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I wanted queen d5. Yeah, but now bishop b7, mm-hmm. I think. Knight b5 with right. the same idea. But now you go going queen b8. Ah. The only move, I think. Right. And now it doesn't work. Um, you don't even have a check. Yes, well, I, of course, calculated some, you know, just some queen c4 or queen d2, but nothing really works. I mean, all my pieces are just, I mean, hanging. Right. And I, I don't see anything. Okay. So you started off with knight b5. And this time, <clears throat> yes, he has to take. Because if he does not, then rook d8 is coming. 
so yeah had yeah. to take and now uh, here again you found a very very pretty move uh, and all those who did not yet find this move try to pause and think what was this very nice move that nurgul played so so first thing is of course to check the check but i think after bishop d7 you have nothing uh, yes and so you went here queen d5 beautiful and the idea is now a mate and also a8 is hanging and b5 is hanging and b5 is hanging so so now if yeah. if he plays bishop b7 then this is just game over yeah it's mate it's mate yeah very nice <laughs> uh so and just just for our viewers uh that if i mean something yeah, just take here or there's no other movie yeah, knight d7 just take on d7 okay so he went back knight to d7 and uh, by the way there was f6 we need to show that for all right f6 yeah because it's because queen uh, yes and black takes second piece but okay, bishop takes b5. Right. King b7. Right. Queen takes uh, a8. F takes g5. And okay, what do you have? Well, let me go. Queen, you have two pieces, I think, for the rook and a pawn, yeah. But these pieces are um, really okay. bad, right? The the one. The yes. Mm -hmm. So just I just chose some rook f1, and okay, it looks completely dead loss. Or or black, yeah. Because okay, you cannot do anything basically. Very good. So f six also does not work. So he played knight yeah. to d seven, and you decided to chop the rook, bishop to c five, and now you know if black can castle, then it won't be so bad because black already has like couple of pawns for the exchange position looks good. So once again, it's time for. You guys, to pause this video and think what was another brilliant move that Nurgul played here. Okay, how how tough was this this sacrifice? Now uh, this was probably like the hardest moment in the game because you know, like I just want to take Bishop B five. Right. Um. Yes, and castle. Mm -hmm. And I thought Queen C six. Right. I think he needs to trade because I otherwise I just take d7, yeah. Right. So take, take. And I thought this should be winning, you know. Hmm. You're exchanging. But up. yeah, I mean, I will take on b2 at some point, but okay, this b2 is not even important. Like I'm exchange up and I can also trade on, uh, like I can go to d8 next move. Hmm. A4, I have passed pawn, so okay, it should be winning if you. Don't blunder something. Right. I think. Right. So, so why did you not decide to go for this? Okay, because Rook D seven is like so tempting again, and I just couldn't, you know, stop myself. Because if I, you know, I have sometimes such moments in the games, I see something really tempting, and I tell myself, okay, Nurgul, if you don't play this, you cannot continue the game. Like my mind will just go crazy, you know. So I need to do it. And I thought, I don't know how long did I think, maybe 20 minutes? I don't know, maybe yeah, less. It, it, 12, 12, and, 12 and a half minutes, yeah. Uh, yes. But okay, this is also maybe, it's more risky, you know, because okay, king d7 only move, because if queen takes d7, yeah. uh, bishop takes b5. Very and, strong move, and yeah. Mate. And that's a mate. So has to take with the king. Now you took on b5 yes. with the bishop. Uh, the only thing to worry now is that materially you are not ahead. So uh, if your attack yeah. fails, then you would be in tr trouble materially. But I think you you were confident, yeah, that you would finish off this game. Uh yes, but uh, I mean the king is on e six, the rook on h eight, and you know these pieces are just too ugly. But here the only move there's only one move in the position I, I think that wins. Because black just wants to go f6, you know, and if he manages to hide the king, okay, I am worse, I think, actually. Right. I mean, for sure I'm worse because, uh, first of all, like, psychologically, I will be completely, like, devastated because I'm king on e6, you know, I was so winning and I just, you know, wasted uh, my advantage. 
And okay, also positionally, my king also maybe starts, you know, being in some danger. I, I'm, I don't know. Mm. So <clears throat> the only move was bishop c4. Brilliant. Yeah, this move yeah, now this asks the question. Asks the question. Because king d7, because I guess king you, you would check, right? Yes. I also there's queen a4, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, queen a4 or rook d1. It's both. Both are winning, right? Yeah. Rook d1 or queen a4. So he, he actually, decided, let's yeah. go to f5. Yes, that's what I was scared of. <laughs> and so, once again, uh, a very nice move here again. Uh, take us through how, how you arrived at it. Because it's like you are attacking, you are sacrificing, then you have to play a calm move. Yeah, well, okay. H4 it was the yes. only, actually, the I think the only move that I calculated, of course, except this checks, because you always need to calculate some checks and some mates, but nothing works. So like this, you like, must have uh, seen first. And something like this. Yeah, of course. But he, he runs King H6. Yeah, uh, it's nothing. So I was very sad that this mates don't work. And okay, h4. Uh, I just protect my bishop. You know, it's I want to go queen of three, h5. If king g6 at some point, h5s are there, g4 is an idea. Well, you feel that it's completely winning, but you know, you still need to be precise. Correct. Uh, so what what way, like he went king g6. I think maybe that's very logical. Uh, you went g4. Because I guess if you play queen e4 check or something, then he can just interpose maybe with the bishop. Uh, he can also go f5. f5. I was actually more worried about f5 moves yeah. uh, because later, imagine you, you are black, you push some h6, manage to hide on h7, and yeah. like I shouldn't allow that. Yeah. And then, then you are regretting why you didn't, why did you take rook d7? So <laughs> you, yes, you have exactly. to be careful. Uh, so g4 you played here and now if he tries to escape with h6 I guess you will go I check queen e4 f5 yes. f I take um, bishop takes and h5 is a mate yeah Ooh, with... yeah king g5 queen h4 is a mate <sighs> nice okay so yeah. that does not work so he went rook f8 but that doesn't make sense. Maybe he wants to just develop the bishop and get the rook protected. Yeah, he just protects the rook and f5 and perhaps he want to take with the rook on it. Got it. Such ideas. Check. So, yeah, bishop d3, f5, only move. G takes. Um, and rook takes. If bishop it. takes f5, yes. there was a very nice move again. Oops, sorry. Position. Let's think. Uh, queen g2. Wow. Yes. And you had seen this beforehand. Yeah. Queen G2. Yeah. Because uh, now, okay, now you want to do this, right? Bishop D8 and it's a discovered check. Yeah, you want Bishop D8. Also, you have, uh, by the way, some moves like Bishop H6. And, uh, oh, okay. You should be completely okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very nice move because then if King gets 6 there's Queen G5 meet. Very cool. Yes. Okay, so she took rook takes f5. Uh, now, uh, sorry, he took rook takes f5. You you played bishop f5, king f5. Uh, if bishop takes, maybe queen e8 check, yeah? Queen e8 is there, yeah. Hmm. Like queen f7, h5. H5, queen. game over, yeah. It's, it's over. Yes. So this is done. Uh, and played here king f5. You went check, king e6, queen e4. Mm -hmm. Just uh, bringing back the queen. Yeah, bishop d4. And now you took a pawn, king d5, queen d3. I think now it's mainly like even if you trade off pieces, you're materially winning. So, yeah. You just... But uh, my main purpose was to trade this uh, bishop on d4, of hmm. course, because uh, it's a great first you have two bishops, and uh, I don't know, maybe some counter chances. And okay, just the bishop on d4 is too strong. And if I trade it, it's just game over. So. Correct. So queen a7 takes, pawn takes, rook e1, bishop f7, check, 
king d6 and now of course you took care that this should not hang yes you played a4 yeah. bishop d5 check king c6 and rook e7 and he resigned uh and how, how was your feeling at the end of this game what did you feel i was just happy that i managed to win with the king on f5 i mean against the king on f5 because if i didn't win that i don't know this is probably the worst feeling because you feel that it's probably plus uh, 10 or something but uh, you know you need to be precise because you miss one move and the king hides somewhere and okay you, you have zero so. correct yeah absolutely uh Nurgul Tell us what does this performance mean to you in your in your chess career right now? Is this would you say like this is a big milestone, or you would say okay, that's just another tournament? Uh yes, it's another tournament, and uh, yeah, it was a really nice performance. But again, I'm very sad that it was unrated. Mm -hmm. But okay, we don't concentrate on this. I'm just happy that I I played well. I worked a lot after my last tournament because I was very disappointed. So I think I proved to myself that, okay, I am a good player. No need to worry. I'm, I'm doing fine. And I just need to keep working to be even better. Fantastic. So so you are right now uh, 20 years old. You are twenty around 2400. As you said, when you were 16, you were already 24, 25. So as a chess player, you definitely have some questions, right? Uh, as to should I pursue chess like with that same vigor uh, as my profession? Do these questions go through your mind? Uh, yes, but um, I really love to play chess. So I have answers to all those questions. <laughs> and, and what's your answer? Well, I want to play chess and I want to be a grandmaster. I am actually, I'm really disappointed that it's been, I don't know how many years. I'm like kind of stuck on 2400 level. I mean, my rating is stuck. I believe I, of course, I improve probably some chess, chess sites. But uh, okay, I'm trying to be patient. Mm -hmm. True, true. And maybe there's a big leap coming in. And you would reach directly the GM title. I think in your journey, you are also supported by some sponsors, right? I saw on your uh, on your Instagram that uh, there's this energy drink or uh, a drink called Hell, which supports you. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Well, uh, yes. This uh, the company sponsored me my tournament last year, uh, 2022, the whole year, and I'm like really thankful because in uh, Especially with our federation situation, you know, it's not really easy for the chess players in Bulgaria. So, yes, I, I'm very thankful for the for the support. But right now, I don't have I sponsorship don't have from them sponsor. anymore. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, it was for one year. So, so right now you fund yourself. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, we hope that uh, you continue playing a lot and you show some great games. We enjoyed this tremendously, uh, Nurgul. Uh, what will be your next tournaments where we can see you in action? I will play European Individual Championship in one month in Serbia. And afterwards, again, European Women's Championship. So a lot of tournaments this year. There's also World Cup and I qualified last year. There is a Grand Swiss where I hope I will play. I will qualify so so, so European uh, individual yes. you will play in open as well yeah I will play in open and then also in women's as well fantastic great well we wish you good luck and uh, we'll follow your games thank you for your time thank you thank you so much